Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Forex Trading Asia Daily Currency Call. This is episode 337. Um, it's the 20th of July, 11 a.m. right here in Singapore, GMT plus eight. Okay, so um, this is the currency call where you will get market economic updates, key support resistance levels, trade ideas, and more. This currency call is going to be very beneficial to both the long-term investors and short-term traders. Here we'll be going through what could move prices, possible trade ideas, and also highlighting potential targets and risk. So a disclaimer here, any information shared during this session is not intended to be a trade recommendation. It is solely the opinion and views of the speakers. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trades. Okay, so um, before, I, before we jump to the charts today, let's uh, get Daniel here, Daniel Chong from LCMS traders trading coach and lcms traders um, yeah daniel yesterday you guys went through a, a session a webinar session coaching session just wanted to see if you can share some of your trade ideas with the um, audience today daniel yes anyway, thank you very much so yesterday really it really was fantastic um you know those who don't know uh, we are in lcms traders club here we are a community of traders where we share strategies ideas analysis and we will monitor the charts and and the markets together so yesterday we had a group coaching sessions uh, at 8 p.m on monday you know just if anybody who knows are uh, interested you know uh if you join the club we have a monday group session Group coaching sessions and on Wednesdays we have a live trading sessions where all the members will come together and have a discussion. Okay, so yeah, we what we did yesterday, you know, was what we we look at the markets. We saw what happened. We reviewed what happened last week, you know, and uh, we un I answered any all the questions that a lot of the uh, club members have last week, like what is moved the market yesterday. I mean, last week we have Bank of Canada, we have Bank of Japan, we have New RBNZ, and what was the difference behind it? And what the questions like why uh, certain people talk, you know, like the Australian governor, when you do a speech, how does it move the market and, and many more. So we are slowly one by one, I let I understand, let the members understand how the fundamental uh, data moves and the fundamental uh, pricing moves the market, right? So yeah, so that's what we did. And then not only that, we look at what happened uh, coming in, the, in this, this coming week where, you know, we labeled it as the Europe ECB week because the next week, this week, it is all about the uh, uh, ECB monetary policy statements and a lot of uh, uh, European uh, PMI data and what could possibly move uh, the market. Then after which we actually talk about, uh, look at the market and, and look at possible trade ideas, plans based on what we knew what happened last week and what's going to happen this week. So when we look at the chart right now, one of the examples that we have, right, was uh, when we look at the, the charts here, you can see pound USD. We had a trade idea last night. It was really very nice where the trend is moving down. We, we had a, a situation where it seems that the safe haven currencies continue uh, with all the COVID-19 uh, uh, movements, continue to be uh, uh, strengthened, uh, most likely uh, in the idea. And when you see pound USD, breaking through last night, waiting to break through uh, the support level 1.3710. We took a, uh, we had a trade idea of uh, selling the GU, the pound USD at one below 1.3680, a possible uh, trade target. It did hit, uh, upon this trade idea, hit it down. And right now retesting the support, uh, now the uh, support turn resistance level and probably we'll, we'll see how it goes if it continues to move downwards in a downwards direction. And of course, uh, we have other uh, trade ideas like uh, Euro USD, where you can see lots of really very nice. Let me zoom it out uh, a little. You can see here, there's some reaction level here. We were waiting for it to break strongly below that at 1.1762, uh, uh, breaking it down at 1.1760 around that level, break it strongly, 
below before we take a possible uh, trade. So, uh, but very interestingly, we seen last night, there were lots of uh, descending triangle patterns coming in, where you can see a, a continuation trend coming in the descending triangle here, possible uh, consolidation within the triangle. And then if it breaks below that level, we will be waiting to get started. When of course we have seen a lot of other uh, pairs as well. See Aussie, New Zealand USD, which Gene and Aussie USD, uh, Gene has been talking about it already. Waiting really very really nice for a pattern. If it breaks breaks through the uh, support zones, we'll be waiting to be taking the trade. You know, and then not only that, uh, I did mention that we will not be looking for Euro USD. It, you know, it looks as if it's uh, reacting this zone here, waiting for it to bounce down. Now it breaks through. So you know, then then we'll be discuss we'll discuss it. If it breaks through, what do we be waiting for? We'll be waiting for the coming down. Where's our buyers coming in? So many many discussions uh, come in. You know, uh, where whether that trade idea moves in or if it doesn't move according to trade idea, what could we be, be doing in our uh, working uh, accordingly? Like you see, like for example, US CAD, we were discussing about because of the oil uh, prices correlated to the oil prices, possibly uh, going, pushing down with volume the channel, either it goes a retracement coming up, going back and hit back the support zone, or it will push down the support zone. That's where we see the US CAD and with the strong uh, safe haven currency that US dollar strengthening. We are also discussing going up and then we say that hey, maybe you will have a little bit of retracement before it continue pulls up and now you can see a, a, a falling wedge coming in uh, and that's what we discussed. So it's all talking about uh, trade ideas and preparing for the week, you know, where we look at what happened last week and this week based on the fundamental analysis and using the five steps technical analysis to possibly time the market. Now you must be wondering, you know, where are uh, all these trade ideas? How do you get to join the group coaching sessions, live trading sessions, and all these trade ideas coming in? You know, where all these can be done really uh, great. Just all you need to do is to join LCMS Traders uh, uh, Club, you know, uh, come here. What you do is goes to uh, tradersclub.lcms.com.sg. Uh, here, scroll it down. You know, this members is really not. You not only get the group coaching sessions here. Um, you know, you get exactly the sig we got signals. Uh, we got a lot of the community here do talking about trade ideas, signals uh, coming in, uh, discussions, market watch coming in, uh, and and many more education videos. All you need to do is call this course. $49 a month only really is a chance for you to join. This price can change anytime, but this without a doubt, you're the least you have to do, you know, to make sure you achieve your best in trading. So just click on the button and fill it up and I'll see you in the club uh, as soon as possible. Hey, thanks for that, Daniel. Yeah, I posted the link in the chat. So do check out the website and uh, subscribe uh, if you find this it's going to be beneficial to your trading. Okay, so I'm going to uh, get Scott here, Scott Andrews from Forest Briefcase, Australia, to share about the dollar index uh, today. Scott. All right. Hi, everyone, and good morning to the new apprentices as well with Jin, too. He almost looks like he's ready to take a trade, Jin. Look out. All right. And also, uh, congrats to the team at Forex Briefcase as well. It's a really nice finish as well to the month. That was that was fantastic to wake up to the profits as well from uh, overnight trading as well. So US dollar we've got with Sam trade here. So uh, I did get a question from Jin yesterday in regards to the US dollar about whether or not it could break higher through 92.80. And I, you know, frankly, I thought with no news coming out, we weren't going to see a lot but you know, what we did see was that there was strong risk off sentiment. And what I mean by that is that we saw equity markets, the NASDAQ, S&P 500, as well as the Dow Jones finally started showing signs of, of some selling pressures. And that came in into, into the markets as well. Uh, the ASX 200 uh, yesterday was, was off a little bit in Australia. So we'll see what it wants to do here. And we do have tonight, uh, we do have tonight, 8.30 GMT plus eight. We've got building permits out with the forecast at 1.69 million. We've got housing starts, the forecast at 1.59. So that's the, the news out for tonight, but we'll see really what is likely gonna happen if we see 
this selling in equities that's really going to help just keep the US dollar elevated as well. So most likely, I'm not going to actually take a trade on the US dollar, but what you'd want to pay attention to is yesterday we discussed the Aussie and the Kiwi, especially the Aussie dollar that is below 7376. That was a really nice trade yesterday. I hope people caught that. But for the US dollar now, if we can trickle up and test 93. So the thing to watch for now, guys, is if you know we can get a breakthrough 93 or so and then wait to see how it behaves there. Maybe tonight we see it just steadying out with the price action. And then we start in the lead up to the news, we might start getting some buying pressure and just see if we get a breakout there on, on that. But frankly, you know, stand by. If we do get a breakthrough 93, we might be going back to, to the highs that we saw at 9340. But I want to see the break first and a close on the one hour candle before we say 9310 to 9340 is uh, is what I'm thinking. Okay, thanks for that, Scott. All right, so right now, um, today is Tuesday. So we have the currency focus today is the Euro dollar. And uh, I'm going to get Jin here, Jin Dao Tai, founder of LCMS Traders, a multi million dollar trader trading an account with more than US $15 million on a daily basis. And of course, he's also joined by a special guest, Jin Jr. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to pass the time now to Jin. Let him settle his special guest first. All right, Jin, pass it to you. I am back, and it's a busy day today. Public holiday in Singapore. That's why I have the two uh, rug reds here with me. So it might get a bit noisy, but bear with me. There are quite a bit of movements to be happened in the markets coming up. So the focus today is the euro dollar. What could happen on the euro dollar? Sharing here first the charts on the euro US dollar. Um, we are seeing the euro sitting at this 1.1791 level and it's been there even last week and the week before. So it's really been struggling to break below this point, right? It's really been struggling to break below this point. And the last time we spoke about it or the last, last time I spoke about it, I said that it was going to come down to this support level and we're going to see what happens at this point again. I do believe that it is probably time, as Scott has been talking about the US dollar gaining strength and now with the Euro testing this support level several times already, I do believe it's time that we could see it track lower. Why I think that is because here, looking at the Forex Trading Asia.com economic calendar, uh, today being Tuesday, we've had the Aussie news we have some US news to be released, but these are not going to be, although they are price movers, they're not huge price movers. What I would actually be focusing on a lot more will be on Thursday, where we do have the Euro interest rate decision going to hold at 0%. Look out for the statement and also the press conference to be released at 8.30 GMT plus 8, because at that point, I believe that Although they're going to be talking about holding everything the same, you know, some positivity coming around, we do see the US gaining more strength. And then following on from that, on Friday, we do have the Euro manufacturing PMI numbers expected to drop a little bit from 63.4 to a 62.5. Euro services PMI going from a 58.3, a slight increase to a 59.5. So you can see it balancing it off a little bit. Hence, not a big change or no big changes expected here for the Euro data. Leading on from that, what could happen? I believe looking at the charts again, Euro dollar on H4 timeframe, what I would be looking for is if it were to break this support level, break below this 1.1781 level, I would like to see that track lower, possibly towards 1.1580, but I think that that's a very big move, about 150 pip downwards. We're going to see a lot more volatility in this region. So 
what you should be looking out for is selling opportunities below 1.1755. You could have a 40, 50 pip stop loss for a very good 150 pip take profit level. Risk 50, make 150. You're still looking at a one is to three risk reward ratio towards the downside. Alternatively, if it does hold, if this support level does hold, we could see it bounce back. This could be an attractive trade to some. You could be looking at about a 30 pip stop for a 60 pip take. But in my view, although this could happen, this will be a trade that you would have to manage very closely. Um, we're gonna see a lot of volatility, same as what happened two weeks ago, it hit this point went up, tracked back down before a small increase again. Same thing last week, went up and tracked back down again. So I don't think we're going to see that full 60 pip move upwards. We're probably going to see a lot of volatility if it holds, if this support level holds. So the more attractive option will still be to sell it downwards, given that it breaks that support level. Why? I would be a bit more cautious. One other thing I'd be a bit more cautious about selling the euro down is that over the last yesterday and today, we seem to be pinning a lot of hopes on the US dollar gaining strength. What if the US dollar doesn't continue its strength? What if we see that retracement um, in the dollar index? Why I say that is because same as the Aussie dollar, which we spoke about yesterday, saying that it was going to track down quite significantly. We've already seen that happen a little bit. Um, the Kiwi dollar, we say that it was going to track a lot lower towards the 6.9 level and it's done that in a hurry. It happened a lot faster than anticipated. It's gone straight down to that support level already. So possibly going to see a bit of US dollar retracement in terms of you know, the dollar index and across the board, we're going to see some profit taking. So be very careful, expect that volatility as the euro dollar, even if the euro dollar breaks below that support to head lower. Every time I look at the euro dollar, we also pay some attention to the euro pound. Euro pound actually might be quite interesting at this point, not a typical trade. This will be significantly counter trend. You could be looking for it to track lower towards 8580. It's gone quite up, quite significantly upwards, hitting 6851. What you could be looking for is for it to track a short term, very short term trade towards 8580 with a tight stop loss of 20 pips. You could be looking at a 40 pip take profit level, a one is to two risk reward ratio towards the downside. But Again, every time I talk about the euro dollar, when looking at the euro, bear in mind what the pound dollar is doing. We might see it track, if it does track back up, that will support the downward move on the euro pound. But if this 137 level holds, then we could see it track lower, possibly more upside on the euro pound. But further insight on the euro pound will probably be tomorrow where we analyze how the pound dollar is going. We've got some pound news as well. So that could give us more insight into what the pound dollar and the euro pound could move along. All right, so yeah, thanks for that, Jim. Um, just a quick disclaimer again, any information shared during this session is not intended to be a trade recommendation is solely the opinion and views of the speaker. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trades. All right, so um, let's Hello. <laughs> yeah, finally the guest speaker has made his appearance. Okay, yeah, so we have come to the end of the session today. Um, we will see you guys tomorrow for the pound analysis. All right, goodbye. <laughs>